I got toilet paper for days. Oh, that was the end of the roll. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm back and today it's the end of the week. <laughs> okay, that might not be news for you guys, but my week has been a complete blur, so it surprised the heck out of me. And uh, I'm not prepared for my video. So <laughs> instead of uh, rushing to make something up like a professional person would, I'm gonna be like Jen Profesh and just make something out of nothing because it's that's how I roll. Mm -hmm. This marks the end of week one of social distancing and I have to say, considering I thought it was still the beginning of the week, time has obviously gone by pretty quickly. I did get lost in the days by being locked away from the world. Things aren't really open, obviously, and for good reason. So other than walking our dogs, we've actually had a pretty great time just staying at home and hanging out together as a family. We even did stuff. I mean, that sounded already like we did stuff, but we did stuff that was productive stuff. Like put up shelves and cleaned the studio for the most part. Uh, you know what, let's move on from there. That one wasn't so productive. <laughs> this week was also mine and Mike's, Mike and I's? Mike and Ike. It was our 12 year anniversary of when we first started dating, which was pretty fun. We got decked out in green and just hung out playing Beat Saber at home. I totally got the rank of S by the way. I didn't know that was a thing. I thought it meant sucked because like the further in the alphabet you go, the worse off you are and he kept getting A's, but it turns out S is a good thing. I felt pretty great after that. Watched a lot of news, shared a lot of memes, watched a lot of DIYs because I love that kind of stuff. Talked to my friends online only because you know, if you truly love them, you'll stay away from everyone. I cleaned the living room, cleaned the upstairs, and started sorting the kids' rooms, and that sounds like an easy task, but it's not because I get distracted a lot. See, here's the problem. When I start a project, like say I was cleaning this room, I would begin by cleaning and have, you know, all the best of intentions, but then I'll find things and I'll be like, hey, that doesn't go here. It goes out in the hallway. So I'll take it to the hallway and then I can't put it down because I've decided to put too many things where they don't belong. So I will then have to move those things to where they go before I can put the new thing where those things were in the way. Did I actually end up cleaning anything? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I might not be able to think of them right now because I'm on the spot, but I have in fact gotten things done this week. So I've decided I want to show you some of them, okay? Because otherwise, the whole week would have went past and I didn't actually do the one thing that could have been useful and entertaining to you guys. So, this is your video instead. Starting with a quick studio tour because I don't think I've actually done one of those yet. And like I said, Mike and I put up some shelves so that I could pretend to be a more organized person and have a cleaner space. Spoiler alert, um, my brain gets distracted quite a bit. I'm pretty sure the entire beginning of this video kind of proves that point. So uh, we're gonna do the tour, but we're not gonna focus on the fact that I stopped almost everything halfway. Okay guys, welcome to the hand cam. I apologize in advance for the lighting. Usually you guys are watching me film over here where everything is lit and beautiful. And the rest of the room, which you're about to find out, is a lot dimmer. It's a lot duller, basically. I also apologize for any blurriness that's happening because the camera's on autofocus and unfortunately, I'm not sitting in my chair the same distance away from the camera as I usually am. So it's gonna have to change and adjust. Hopefully it's just not super, super bad. And also I apologize for any shakiness. This camera is very heavy. <laughs> this is dark. Dogs. Welcome to my life. The dogs are always moving and they are directly above my head. So I always have to pause filming so that you don't miss what I'm saying while they scratch and shake the floor like an earthquake. <laughs> Anyways, let's begin the tour at my coffee calendar. Actually, we're gonna have to address whatever's going on back there. This here is a makeshift screen to block the rest of my basement from you. Also, because we didn't put the door back on yet. So if you come into the room, this is what you see from the doorway. My Disney movies on top and my shelves on the bottom and all the stuff I haven't done in the way. If you were to go from this side, you would see my super long table, a whole bunch of stuff I have yet to do. This right here is the screen that I use when I'm doing top-down overhead shots. So the camera connects to a cord via the roof in my janky getup here, all the way down to this screen here so that I can actually see if I'm in frame, which is very important because sometimes I'm not, like probably now. 
There you go, turn, turn, turn. And what's that? Right over there we have the desk. This is where myself or Mike will edit our videos. And then of course, the ever important in a studio, naked Barbies. They are literally everywhere. This right here is the cause of why the room is not done because I found the naked Barbies and it led me to think of something else, which I'll make sure to point out after. Anyways, up here on the wall we have an Where's, where, I, I'm doing it backwards. <laughs> I need some lighting on my face, bro. Over here, we've got a super cool wood carved Star Wars mosaic type thing, which I had made for Mike for Christmas like two or three years ago. And to the right of the desk, I guess, we have the new shelves that we put up, as well as a couch. Most people use these for sitting. Typically, I use them for putting things. Mm -hmm. If there is any bare surface in this room, it will be covered in stuff and I will lose whatever it was that I was putting there for safekeeping. It is a fact. But today all is well with only a Squishmallow, two pillows, and a baby Yoda. So over here we have some of the paint night paintings that we've done and all the knickknacks that I have to put somewhere. Like all the Dudleys. Oh, we lost a Dudley. Where is he? Dudley the dragon, he's hiding behind a paint night painting. Got more Disney movies, Dudleys, that magnetic block TARDIS that I made. Of course, the 10th Doctor, some super cute journals, LOL stuff, DIY dollhouse rooms, pens, markers, Bob Ross, of course. Just beat the devil out of it. And over here in the corner is what you guys know and love. So we've got my chair and my super comfy butt cushion. And we've got an old dresser, which I painted to match my chair. And then all the cords and stuff that I hide under there. And of course the super motivational posters that a lot of you guys keep asking about. Truth be told, I don't know where you can get them because my mom bought this for me. It was actually a calendar and she got it at the dollar store a few years ago and I just ripped off the back pages once I was done with that year so that I could keep the actual posters because I thought they were hilarious. So I don't know where you can get them, but basically color your own pictures and put your favorite unmotivational quotes on them and you'll have your own. All right, all right, all right. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. So the focus of this little room tour was to show you my awesome shelves that I was excited about. Okay, so here they are, and I got baskets at the dollar store, and what I did was I separated all my crafty stuff into bins, and then I used my label maker to make labels so that I would know what's in the bins, because obviously these are a little taller than I am because I'm vertically challenged. So I need to know what's inside them without taking each and every one down. That's where the stickers come in handy. This one has stickers and such. This one here is all different foams. That one is crafting extras. Oh my gosh, this is getting heavier. This one is my collection of glue guns and glue sticks. Ow! The one that I just hit myself on is crochet accessories. Ooh. This one here is all for tapes and adhesives. This one here is all scissors and I'm missing like 12 pairs. So once I find those, they'll go in there too. This one's for staplers and random other things to affix items to other items. And this one is for different kinds of glue. I've got like 6,000 other art supplies that I need to find a place for and I currently don't have a place for them. So I'm gonna have to get to that eventually. And they'll probably have to go on those shelves over there and I'll have to move that stuff or just add new shelves somewhere. Or maybe I'll have to take down my Disney movies. They're not all up yet anyways. They're all down here too. And I have like two or three other boxes in the other room of all the movies that I still have to put up. So I'm gonna have to pick and choose at some point. Over here we have all those vintage reproduction Barbies that I haven't opened yet. And down here as well, plus two or three random others. Down here I have some stuff that I use for videos. Same with over there. Here's some stuff I have yet to open. This one here is a junk drawer that you can't really see because it's super dark. Over here we have some of my yarn. I've got like five giant tubs of this stuff, but I mean, who doesn't need yarn? And over here we have Shopkins Little Secrets and Polly Pocket stuff. And here's our cool, super awesome setup that we did to make it all work. I'm not gonna lie, when I show you guys the room piece by piece, it no longer looks even as semi-clean as I thought it did. <laughs> so we're gonna stop this now and move on to something else.
Welcome back to the chair, folks. And I know that this beauty has been standing here the whole time and you've probably stared at it once or twice. We're gonna get to her in a second because as you saw in the little room tour, there were quite a few naked Barbies floating around the studio. And do you remember when I said that I got distracted by a different thing when I was supposed to be organizing the shelves? Well, it was the naked Barbies. I had in fact been cleaning off a shelf to find a space for the Barbies when I realized how truly naked many of them were and that they desperately needed clothing. And that's when I realized, hey, I can make them clothes, but I'm a terrible seamstress. And it was probably not gonna work out anyways because all the stores are closed and I don't actually have fabric. So I decided to stick with what I know and crochet some clothes myself. Stop looking at her. She's the end result. And uh, the first one that I came up with was this gray dress with little ruffles on the bottom. And don't get me wrong, I think it turned out great. It's really cute and I was super proud of it until I tried it on a doll that had a bigger bust. And that's when I discovered that it stretches and you can see the nips. And uh, obviously I had to fix that. So bring in attempt number two. This one here is super cute and it's very similar to that one, except that it's more of like a solid sweater. <laughs> like there's no frills on the bottom and you couldn't see through the dress to her chest area, which is a really big deal because obviously that's what I was going for or wasn't initially what I was going for and trying to prevent the second time around. But believe it or not, this is not what I was going for either, which is completely okay because once we added a belt and some accessories and cute shoes, it still works and looks adorable. In fact, they both do. As long as you got accessories, it, uh, it works. That sounds like a Barbie thing to say. Life is great with accessories. <laughs> So yes, attempt number one, attempt number two, but where, oh where is attempt number three? <gasps> I don't trust myself. <laughs> this was the doll that had the head that popped off from such films as Bobby the Booty Shaken Llama. And for those of you who were wondering, I did find out that they were fashion frenzy dolls and the heads being removable was a feature that allowed you to swap outfits, but not necessarily take the outfits off. Basically, it just made it easier for you to change the look of your doll really quick. And if you haven't seen that video and don't know what I'm talking about, peep this. A totally removable head. <sighs> So unfortunately I don't have any other fashion frenzy dolls so that I could pop their heads off and easily swap this. So just imagine that this one's a totally new head and surprise, we have a totally new doll wearing the dress. Ah! This is kind of what I was envisioning for my dress. It is an off the shoulder, beautifully fitted bodycon, pearl button backed, gorgeous specimen of a dress. In fact, I was so excited that we took about a hundred pictures of it because I know it's not gonna look like this forever. So now the question is, which do you prefer? Dress one, dress two, or dress number three? I just realized you might not have any concern or care in the world for crochet clothes on Barbies. But you know what you might care about? Toilet paper. I heard that that's a big deal right now. So I decided in case you find yourself in that particular situation where you need toilet paper but can't get any, to uh, make it yourself. <laughs> And uh, maybe you'll find this a little more exciting. I got toilet paper for days. Oh, that was the end of the roll. <laughs> it's reusable, sustainable, a creative craft even. So uh, yeah, if you wanna find out how to crochet your own roll of toilet paper and you wanna see me potentially fail at my first ever crochet tutorial, then stick around for 20 seconds from now when I give you all those steps. In order to get started on our crochet project, you are going to need a crochet hook. Today I have a size 5.5 or an eye hook. This is a pretty standard hook size and a really easy one to get started on if you're a beginner. You'll also need scissors or something to cut your yarn. I have a few fancy gizmos, but scissors are what most people would have. And although you can use a crochet hook to weave in your ends when you're done your project, I choose to use a tapestry needle because it just makes things a lot quicker. And even though you can do this without a tool, I find that it makes it a lot simpler to get the yarn through the eye, especially if if you're new to this, if you use this little bull jibber, and I'll show you how to use it when we get there. And the last thing you're gonna need is some yarn. Since I'm making toilet paper, I've chosen to use white, but you can do whatever you want. But in case you care, I'm using a Red Heart number no. four weight yarn. So I made this pattern up earlier. It's nothing amazing, but it is simple, and it's perfect for a beginner, since it's only gonna have a few technical things. But despite how simple it may be, you will still need to know some basics, especially if you've not crocheted before. So we're gonna quickly cover those, and then we can begin. First things first, I am right-handed, so my hook will be in my right hand, and I'll be holding the tension with my left. And before I start, I'm just gonna point out that there are multiple 
multiple ways you could crochet, but there's no wrong way. You might see people holding their hook like a pencil. They're super speedy and pro and I'm jealous of them, but I can't do that. Instead, I hold mine like this because it's just the way I taught myself. It's all about what's comfortable. All right, so before you begin any project, you will need to cast on to your hook so that you can begin your foundation chain. And this is pretty simple. You are literally going to create a knot by wrapping your yarn around two fingers and pulling the back piece through. There are many different ways to do this, but in the end, you should have a knot that is able to tighten around your hook. This is not the way that I do it, but it's the easiest way that I can show you guys because mine is kind of crazy. And if you don't believe me, it goes something like this. Beep. Like, I don't even know how I would have described that. <laughs> At this point, your hook should be in whichever hand is dominant for you, and the opposite hand will have your yarn. There are many different ways, just like holding a hook, that you could hold your yarn, but I'm gonna do what's most comfortable for me, which is to run the yarn through my ring and middle finger, and then up around my index finger. And then with my thumb, I'm gonna hold the tail end of the yarn that we used to knot around the hook. Typically, this is what my hand looks like. But for today, I'm gonna to keep it simple and stay like this. And now we can begin our foundation chain. You are just going to take your hook, wrap it around and under the yarn, and you're gonna pull right through the loop that you started with. Then you just pull it tight using the hook and the part that you're holding with your thumb and middle finger. And you've got a little loop, which is part of your foundation chain. Let's go again. We'll go around, under, twist the hook, and pull it through. Again, around, under, twist your hook to catch it, and then pull it through. So I have three now. One, two, three. Go again. Around, under, twist, and pull for four. Around, under, twist, and pull for five. Now for my pattern, you're gonna need 14 of these, so let's just carry on. And there is my foundation chain. This part here is not our first row. It is specifically the foundation chain. We're actually gonna start the first row in just a second, but I just wanna show you where we're gonna go into. So when I say go into a chain, it means right here. And then you'll yarn over by grabbing some yarn, just like before for the foundation chain, and you'll pull through and then you'll yarn over again and pull through the rest. Some people refer to these little spaces as stitches, some refer to them as chains, and others call them spaces. So in the first space, in the first stitch, in the first chain. Today, I'm gonna to be saying in the chain to make life easier for us. Now, typically, most people begin crocheting with a single crochet, and today we're gonna to be doing a double. So if you wanna see a video about that, and for some reason you like my weird tutorial that's not very informative, I'll do that another day, because like I said, today we're doing doubles. So now that we have our foundation chain of 14, I'm going to need you to chain one more. So now in the end, you should have 15. And then we're gonna begin our double crochets. So to do this, you're going to yarn over, which means pick up some yarn, and you're gonna go into the second chain from the hook. So here's the hook. Here's the first, we're skipping that. It's gonna create a wall for us. We're gonna go in this one right here. Boom, stick it through. Pretty simple stuff here. You're gonna go behind your yarn as usual, grab it with your hook by twisting and pulling it through. At this point, you should have three strands of yarn on your hook. You're gonna yarn over again and pull through only two of those. Now you'll have two left. So you're gonna yarn over one more time and pull through both. And that right there is your first double crochet. And we're gonna do this the entire way across. So go again. Yarn over and go into the chain. Three on the hook, yarn over, go through two. Two on the hook, yarn over, go through the last two. And now you have two, one, two. So go again. Yarn over, through the chain, yarn over, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So I'm just gonna continue with my double crochets until I get all the way to the end. Here is the last chain, and just like before, we're gonna yarn over and stick our hook through. Now we have three on our hook. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through the last two. And here is our first completed row. At this point, you're going to chain two. So go one, two, and then you are going to turn your work. And now we are ready to begin again. We're gonna repeat the exact same pattern. We're going to yarn over and go in the very first chain. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. The only difference between this row and the last one is that since it was a foundation chain we were starting from, we had to create the wall by adding the first chain and then skipping the first one from the hook. We don't have to do that anymore. So we went right into the first hole that was there. Now we're just gonna do the exact same thing all the way across. So yarn over, go in the next chain, yarn over, pull through for three, yarn over, 
pull through for two and yarn over, pulling through to give us nothing. I'm just gonna continue on my merry way. Now I'm at the end of row two, and some people tend to get flustered here, especially when you've just started crocheting. I know I definitely did, because if you skip this one here, since it doesn't look like a regular stitch, your work goes from straight to uh, wobbly in a hurry. So I just wanna make sure you know not to skip this guy here. He's important. Now, just like before, we are going to chain two and turn our work. At this point, it's pretty simple. You'll just continue on until you finish six rows. Here you go. One, two. Next one will be three, four, five, six. You know how to count. I trust you. So I'm going to keep going until I have six rows and basically my first sheet of toilet paper. So I've been crocheting for about maybe 10 years now, and I tried to learn at a community class that was being offered. I'm pretty sure the instructor was left-handed and it just boggled my mind. I couldn't understand it. So I kind of just kept tying knots over and over, doing what I thought was crochet until I realized that it wasn't. From there, I went to YouTube and looked up some beginner tutorials and discovered the Crochet Crowd, which is super awesome and teach in both left and right-handed tutorials. So I highly recommend that channel if you ever want to learn how to crochet and uh, look at me now woo! and I really enjoy crochet because it's a great way to give gifts and make things for people you care about I think the first thing I ever crocheted was probably like a square because <laughs> I mean you have to practice but like the first finished product was a really ugly green frog hat and I was so proud of it oh and I made a Super Mario quilt all right that is the end of row six I think one, two, three, four, five, six. I can count, yay! <laughs> and this is essentially a sheet of toilet paper, but we're gonna finish it off by chaining two and turning. So at this point, our pattern is literally chain 14 for the foundation, add a chain, and then double crochet the entire way across. Chain two, turn, and repeat for six rows. But now for row seven, you are going to chain one more, giving you a total of three. You're gonna yarn over for your double crochet, but you're gonna skip the first chain and go into the second. Same stuff, now you have three on your hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through the last two. So you'll have a gap there. Then you'll chain one and repeat. Yarn over, skip a space, and go into the second. Ta-da! Um, now, if you don't want your spaces to be quite so big, let's go back to the end of row six, pretend it never even happened. You would chain one and turn and then chain your second one. I guess you could still chain two. <laughs> and you'd yarn over, skip a space, and then go into the second, but you would do a half double crochet. So instead of doing two moves when you've got your three on your hook, you're just gonna yarn over and pull through all three, giving you a smaller hole. Then you'll chain one and repeat. Yarn over, skip a space, pull through three. Chain one and repeat all the way across. And that's literally the pattern, folks. Now you just have to repeat the entire process over and over again until you have the length of the roll you want. So at this point, you're going to chain two and turn, and I'm only gonna show you this because it can get tricky now that we have some tighter spots since we skipped some spaces, but it's the exact same process. So you've got your two chain, you're gonna yarn over and go into this spot here and do your double crochets. Yarn over, and that spot right there is where you're going. You're just gonna repeat rows one to seven over and over until you have the desired length of toilet paper that you require. Now obviously this is more of a gag gift. Don't use it as toilet paper. It's, it's not gonna be the softest. <laughs> However, if you do choose to make individual squares, you can use these as little washcloths. Or alternatively, you could use your completed toilet paper roll as a very weird and wonky toilet paper scarf. Those are probably the most useful uses for this project when it's completed, other than making people laugh on the internet. There you go. Now I have two pieces of toilet paper. So at this point, I'm just going to pull one more time time, take my scissors and cut, and then pull the rest of this yarn through. And here is the tail of my yarn, my little jibber, and my tapestry needle. So to use one of these, you'll stick the bigger end, because it's a bigger yarn, through the eye of your needle, secure your yarn, and pull it through. And now we'll weave in our ends so that it doesn't come undone. So you're just going to go through the fattest parts of the yarn posts you can find, basically. And pull it tight, but not too tight because all of a sudden it gets all wonky. 
and then just go up, down, left, right, but just try to stay in the actual posts or wherever there's a buildup of yarn so that you don't create some kind of weird, ugly, stitched in design that doesn't belong there. Because the idea here is to hide the yarn end and let it become part of the actual product without having to have little knots all over and little bits of yarn poking through, which could eventually unravel on you. Once it's woven through as much as you'd like, you cut the excess and then do the exact same thing with the other tail end. This one here was from the foundation chain and because it's where we started, you'll notice it's a lot looser. So I'm going to tighten that up by going once through and then do the same thing I did on the other side. And uh, that is two sheets of toilet paper. At this point, if you continued on, you would have lots more. And if you did make a lot more, you would wrap it around a spare toilet paper roll you have or a cut paper towel roll so that you can make it the perfect gag gift for somebody and then wrap it in plastic, that'd be fun. The way I see it is if you want this to at least look like a pretty substantial roll of toilet paper, at least single ply, you'd have to complete rows one to seven at least 10 times to get this size. In a perfect world, if you wanted it to be like triple ply, you would do it 15 times. And here is the comparison. This is what it would look like if you use double crochet method on row seven, giving you the bigger squares for the perforated area. And this is what it looks like with the half double crochet. So pulling through all three at once versus pulling through two and then two again. It's a little hard to see it side by side, but basically one produces a bigger hole. And now, although it may seem like the obvious choice to just wrap your new toilet paper scarf type thing around a roll and call it a day, I will point out that if you were to just hand it to somebody, because it's so loose, it might just fall through. So I actually recommend cutting your roll first that way you can sort of clip it in there and then roll it up just like that. And then boom, you got yourself some toilet paper. And that concludes the end of my first ever crochet tutorial. It was probably pretty crappy, not gonna lie. But lucky for us, we've got teepee. <laughs> I crack myself up. Okay guys, that is it. The end of the toilet paper tutorial. Please let me know if you decide to make one yourself. And also, if you do, I need to know two things. One, if you already know how to crochet, please let me know if that tutorial was a decent job. Because I feel like because I already know how to crochet, it's harder to slow down and show step by step without kind of rushing things. So yeah, if you make it, let me know if it worked out for you. Now, if you don't know how to crochet and you decide to go get the supplies and come back and watch this video and try to do it yourself, let me know if it actually worked for you and made any sense to you. Because otherwise you might have to go check out somebody else who does beginner crochet. Basically what I want to know is, should I try to make any other crochet tutorials? Because honestly, that is one of the first things I decided I wanted to do when I started a YouTube channel like six years ago. And this is the first time I've done it. So basically I need to know if I should pursue it or flush those dreams down the toilet. Except not this, this this would clog your toilets. But yes, hopefully you enjoyed today's video and the quick studio tour. Now you kind of see how jumbled my life is in my brain and out loud in person. That's the one I meant. <laughs> Cause like I said, I came in here to organize and put things away for the shelves and found naked Barbies, which led to Barbie clothes and uh, toilet paper. So. There, there you go. That, that's the end of that. If you know somebody who would enjoy watching this video, you know, the uh, culmination, I guess we could call it, of social distancing week one in Jen's brain slash studio with crochet stuff, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video. And just to be uh, different and switch things up today, what stood out the most to you in my studio? As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.